It might come as a shock to some of you to know that Japan is participating in the largest military bid going on these days, that is the Australian government's attempt to fill its need for submarines. The Japanese are bidding, they've got some competitors from, from Germany and maybe from Sweden. Michael, I didn't even know that the Japanese were that deep into building, you know, world-class submarines. I mean, it's only been, what? 10, 15 years since the arms export ban was lifted. Well, under this current administration, that export ban has been, in fact, further loosened so that Japan can really participate in this particular bidding process. Now, the reason why Japan wants in on this right. rather than, than there being some kind of debate on Japan's role as a pacifist nation and such is because it's it's a big contract. It's product. It's 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 help, helping the economy. And it's something that Japan has been doing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. People might be amazed that Japan has a massive uh, fleet of of submarines, but I that is the it. case. But the, yeah. the, 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 it has had it for quite some time because one, it's one way of controlling the vast undersea area that Japan claims as its own mm -hmm. without having surface ships. Surface ships would draw attention, particularly internationally, of course, but also domestically right. with the part of the Japanese populace that is firmly pacifist. Mm -hmm. If something's under the surface, you can't see it, mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay, right. if they're spending loads of money on submarines, then I want ads in all of the Tokyo metro stations about these submarines. Let's just bring it to the surface. Mm -hmm. These are your priorities, Japan, because what I always see are ads for coffee right. or makeup. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you talk about pacifism, that's pacifying a population. Mm -hmm. it, you, you really need to educate the people about where money is going. Right. And then let them decide if they're going to put all of their little cookies into things yeah. that are beneath the surface. Because as you said, if these were surface ships, it would be showing a more assertive posture right. for Japan. But when they take it below surface, then... They can still be militarized, but be very quiet about right. that. Well, well, yeah, I, I actually agree with you that there should be a little bit more open discourse about it. But the, the fact is, is that the Japanese Navy used to be the pride of Japanese militarism. And so for them to kind of focus back on, on submarines, which I was unaware of, it, it's, it's sort of, it's kind of a nice thing to hear. But yes, I think uh, they should talk about it. And, you know, if, if they're going to be world class about it, to well, such a Well, we're talking about it, and I'm surprised that you didn't know about no, it. So true. that's very telling. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the issue, of course, is that the United States is not in the business anymore of building diesel submarines. It builds only nuclear powered right. subs. For a country like Australia, which wants to buy diesel subs, they have a very small number of potential suppliers. Mm -hmm. And Japan, until now, has not been an international supplier. How many Australians want to buy any submarine? Well, no, <laughs> You're I, talking about the government, right? The I'm Japanese, trying to separate the, out the government. people from the right. government. Governments well, are the ones who are going to be doing the buying. They're the ones that are going to be signing the checks. That's right. So, let's, so that's, let's not let the people get in the way. No, well, it's, but the thing is, is that you that's what representative government is supposed to be. Right. They oh, need, supposed to. Yeah, I mean, they need <laughs> no, a fleet of 18... <laughs> you don't put everything on a referendum. <laughs> right. Yeah, and in this case, Japan is a purely... Uh, no, I know you can't put everything on a referendum, but it, it, at the same time, the way that elections go, and I'm, I mean, here they just seem endless, but in the U.S., all the money that goes into elections, too. So ultimately, we pay, because if you, if you say that uh, this, it, there's big money to be made here, this mm -hmm. is a product Right. On the international marketplace, well, we're paying. We're, we're paying maybe sure. more in taxes. We're paying regardless. It's not something that's over here that we don't have any involvement in. Mm -hmm. Well, of, of the secret super weapons that are out there, I mean, the, the B-1 bomber, the aircraft carriers and submarines, are. that's where a lot of the technology is being devoted to. And to see Japan, you know, uh, excelling in that to such a degree that you know, even the Australians okay, would it's the large. It's the largest diesel submarine. The Sodio class submarine is the largest diesel submarine on offer in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's now on offer, which is why the Australians are buying it. They wouldn't be, bu they're not buying it simply in order to spite the world. They want to buy it because they think it's the best deal. Look, I couldn't even get a Hotel Okura 
Right. Hello. So I <laughs> on the auction recently. She's still so mad how about much that. is a submarine? I'm still really yes. mad about that. They're extremely expensive, okay. and they're yes. going to remain extremely expensive. And it will tax Japan's uh, capacity in order to fulfill the needs of the self defense forces and also deal with the Australians. Now, what is interesting from an international perspective is that in order to win the bid, Japan's defense suppliers are going to have to open up their technology. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to share it. They may even have oh, to build true. most of the, these boats in, in Australia. Australia. In Australia. Right. Right. And that's that kind of activity has something that Japanese defense suppliers have never done. Right. And so this is the step that that is really significant. Whether it's needed or not is something that is decided by the people of Australia or the people of Japan. Okay. But for, for us, what is interesting is this process whereby Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, IHI, all these defense contractors here that have been until now closed Side shops on, right. are going to be open ones. Mm -hmm. And Japanese are very interested in intellectual property, They're much more so than people probably are aware. Well, I'm not anti-technology. I'm all for, if you're doing more research and development, but for more peaceful and nonviolent purposes. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about nuclear subs, right? No, no, this D is diesel okay, subs. Diesel. These are diesel subs. Okay. Well, Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to bring up diesel that didn't go well. Um, but it it's just is it an effort then to bring the US, Australia, yes. and Japan to have the stronger trilateral. Yes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. That's, that's Of course, that's going to raise a lot of issues with people because when you hear trilateral, you think trilateral commission, there's a whole... Well, no, you also think that who's it trilateral against. Yes, right. exactly. And that's and we the know country with that. the letter C yes. that you're not yes. supposed that's to right. talk about. Right. That's right. Well, the thing I like yes. about submarines yeah. is that they are not, <laughs> they are not by definition an offensive force. They're also defensive and primarily defensive because they can lurk and they can they can protect your shoreline and... Um, well, they could be potentially quite offensive if you... If uh, you absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, but I think the, the, the reason why they are, they're such a powerful um, force is that, you know, they're, they're essentially defensive, I mean... They're uh, invisible, yes. Yes, right. So can you all imagine, though, actually serving aboard a submarine? Because no. I'm, I'm too... Claustrophobic. Right. I live I in Tokyo. Think about that. I, I, I don't worry about <laughs> space or, or, or size Roll issues. Roll right at off all. your shoulders. Although I'm very pro Navy because of my dad. Navy is good. Yeah. Yes. History. Yes, you've Being got a, a Navy guy. A great Hansen. history. There. Yeah. Mm. You're going to write a book about that. I am. I'm doing a book on the USS Missouri, Power and Persuasion. Mm -hmm. Just a short book. I have to go to Hawaii first, though, to do my research. But because my dad did serve on the USS Missouri in 1946, mm. I've got a standing VIP tour awaiting me. Well, thank and, you very uh, much for your father's service. Oh, well, you're very welcome. And it actually led to the Truman Doctrine. Uh, of late, we've been hearing about different uh, presidents and their foreign policy doctrines. Mm -hmm. And Truman's doctrine, of course, was to show Eastern Europe, that the U.S. Uh, was going to have a more of a presence. So my dad was involved in the ship uh, returning the body of the uh, Turkish ambassador to the United States. So mm -hmm. this was a very symbolic show of persuasion. Oh, yeah. They didn't have to fire a shot. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to bring that angle into it. No, I think that's that's great. Michael, the uh, persuasive power of the Japanese winning this bid is just uh, incalculable. Mm. It depends. The, the, the Australians want the Japanese to win and would like that to happen. And there was almost a deal signed. It was reopened. There were changes in both governments and everything was undone and re, re, is now we have this bidding process. They're talking about it today, aren't they? But they still... Yeah. Japan still has the inside track, mm -hmm. but who knows? Well, with that, I think I'd like to close this one up. Thank you very much for your comments.